Ladies and gentlemen, dear pupils, welcome to a new TV lesson designed for fourth uh, your secondary education. Today, as you know, we continue uh, presenting lessons, English lessons, I mean, for the uh, fourth year secondary education, of course. And today's lesson is going to be about uh, lesson number four in module number three, as you know. Uh, the title of which is Prize uh, Winners, uh, of course. Here's my lesson, of course. And I'm going to start this lesson with a short activity in which I'm going to test your uh, knowledge. I'm going to provide you with pictures. And as you can see, these are some people, of course. And they will provide you with their names. And I will ask you to guess the names of those people, of course. I know the pictures are too old. Yeah. Okay. I'll help you. Here is the list of the names, of course. <coughs> so, we are going to speak about Nikola Tesla, Alexander Graham Bell, Gordon Good, Philo Taylor Fansworth, William Koff, and Alexander Fleming. So, who is that first man? Mm -hmm. He is Nikolas Tesla. Great. What about the second? The second is Alexander Graham Bell, of course. Yes. Okay, let's move to the second couple of pictures. Here, here they are. So, we have already dealt with Nikolas Tesla and Alexander Graham Bell, as you can see. What about the third? Mm -hmm. The third is Philo Taylor Farnsworth. Great. And the fourth is going to be Gordon Good. Great. Thank you. Let's move on. <coughs> Again, we have moved or we have dealt with four till now. The last couple of pictures, much newer of course, so, these pictures are about William Goff and Alexander Fleming. Great. Thank you. Now, why are we dealing with these people, if you remember? Mm -hmm. They are very famous. Yes, they are very famous. How? They have made some wonderful achievements, of course. Okay? Do you want to know them? Let's do it together. I'm going to provide you with the list of these six names, of course, and with their uh, achievements, of course. And your job is to try to match each person with his achievement. That's it. Great. So, have a look at the list. So, we are speaking about William Koff, Alexander Graham Bell, Gordon Good, Philo Taylor Farnsworth, Nicholas Tesla, and Alexander Fleming. And here are their achievements. One of them discovered penicillin, the other invented the kidney dialysis machine, another one invented the laser, the fourth invented the first electronic television, television I'm sorry, and <coughs> the next invented the telephone. Normally we have something, uh, another one, yes that's it. We speak about someone who invented the modern radio. Great. Okay, let's start. What did William Koff do? William Koff invented the kidney dialysis machine. Great. And what about the famous Alexander Graham Bell? I think it's easy. Yeah, he invented the telephone. Great. What about Gordon Good? Gordon Good invented the laser. Great. Philo Taylor Fansworth invented the first electronic television, of course. And finally, or before that, Nikola Tesla invented the modern radio. And finally, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin in 1928. Great. So, what is the importance of these achievements, of these discoveries, of these inventions. Mm -hmm. 
they have done great deal to the humanity. Yes, they have helped the humanity, of course, of course. So, we are going to discuss now the, the importance of some. We are not going to discuss all of them, of course, but we are going to concentrate especially on some of them. In which, <coughs> in this activity, we are going to see the, the, the impact or the importance of these uh, inventions, of these discoveries, uh, on uh, the uh, humanity, uh, of course. Let's do it together. Here, we are going to provide you, or before that, we are going to, to provide you with a, a grid in which, as you can see, we have the verb invent, 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 invent. Yes, for a simple reason, which is, as you can see here, if I go back to the uh, previous uh, picture, of course, we have invented, as you can see here, invented, 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 of course. So we are going to deal with an activity of word derivation about that. Great. So have a look at this. So we have the word invent, which is repeated for uh, six times, of course. And I'm going to ask you to look for or to find out the simple past tense and the past participle or the past participle of that verb. A noun which means something created for the first time through the use of the imagination. And another noun, but this time we are going to speak about one or someone who creates something new. The next word is going to be again another noun, but this time for a woman. Great. A woman who creates something new. And finally, we are going to drive an adjective which is the synonym of creative. Great. So let's start. What is the simple past tense or the past participle form of the verb to invent? Yes, we all know that to invent is a regular verb and the simple past tense simply ends with an ed. Great. Now, the, in, the noun. Something or the thing which is created for the first time through the use of imagination is, okay, we need three letters at the end. We speak about invention. Great. Another noun, but this time for the person. So the person who invents something is an inventor. Great. And if she is a woman, she is going to be an inventress. Okay. What about the adjective? Synonym for creative, it ends with the same letters. So it's very simple, it is going to be inventive. Great, well done. Okay, let's move now to see the importance of these achievements on uh, the, the humanity, of course. And as uh, I said previously, I'm going to concentrate especially on some of those uh, achievements. I, I will not discuss uh, all of them, of course. And this is going to be done through a fill-in-the-blanks exercise. As you can see here, we have a paragraph containing some blanks. So we are asked, or normally we should be asked to fill in these blanks, and we are going to do that with words from the list, of course. Let's start with the first word. The first word is leave. Leave is a, is a verb. Great. <coughs> Second, the preposition from. Appeal. And here, I just want to draw your attention to the word appeal simply because it may be a verb, yes, or it may be a noun. So, you have to take that into consideration when dealing with these kinds of exercises. So, we have to be careful about the forms of the words. Okay, so here the word appeal can be a noun or a verb. Okay, let's move on. As well, mm -hmm, which is used to, to add things together or to speak about two things together. Great. What about the next? Important. Very simple. An adjective. Great. Into. Another preposition. But. Mm -hmm. And finally, begin, which is a verb, the verb to begin, yes, in the simple past. Okay, great. Let's have a look at this paragraph together. 
Technology continues to blossom every second of every day as we discover new aspects to make life more efficient and easier. Communication technologies blank in the late 14th century with printing. Mm -hmm. What do you notice here? We have a sentence which starts with uh, a capital C and which ends with a full stop. Mm -hmm. What are the two pillars, if I can use the word of a sentence? In a sentence, we must find a subject, great, and a, and a verb, for sure. So, what is the subject? The subject is communication technologies. Very good. So, what do we need after the subject? Normally, we need a verb. Mm -hmm. And when we need a verb, of course, we have to be careful about uh, its tense. And in this sentence, we have a time indicator, of course, which is in the late 14th century. So, normally, this sentence requires a verb in the simple past tense. Well done. So, what is the verb, of course, here? It is going to be began. So, communication technologies began in the late 14th century with printing. Newspapers, journals, magazines all grew this development. So, what comes after printing? We speak about newspapers, journals, magazines, yes. And all of these things grew because of or thanks to or Yes, from this development. Newspapers, journals, magazines all grew from this development. The telegraph in the late 19th century paved the way for not only radio but the telephone blank. What, what can you notice here in this sentence? We have a very important expression which is as you can see here, the telegraph in the late 19th century paved the way for not only radio. Normally, with not only, what do we use? Not only, but also. Great. So, here is the but, but there is no also. So, we have to look for the word which can play the role of also. So, in order to have the expression not only, but also, or not only but as well. Thank you. Well done. So, the sentence is, the telegraph in the late 19th century paved the way for not only radio but the telephone as well. The telephone has evolved, blank, a major means of communication. Mm -hmm. So, the telephone which started in the past, of course, now the telephone is the most important means of communication. It is the major means. So there is a, a shift, there is a transition from an old situation to a new situation, of course. So we can express that movement, we can express that shift by using the expression or the preposition the telephone has evolved into. <coughs> a major means of communication, especially today with the creation of mobile phones where almost no one can blank his home without having his cell phone. So what do we need here? After can, normally we need a verb in the, in the base form. Very good. So, no one can leave his home without having his cell phone. Let's move on. The radio is a technology that started not only a means of communication, blank, entertainment as well. So, what do you notice here? Yes, we, we have almost done the same thing previously. So, the expression here is not only but also, not but also, here we have but uh, as well. So, the preposition that we need here is uh, the, prep, uh, the word uh, but. Radios, blank, was soon taken over by the television which started a revolution of entertainment and advertising. So, in this blank, or this blank, is preceded by a noun and an apostrophe S. Yes, so what, do, what does this S mean? Mm -hmm. 
we speak about the, the possessive s. And it is normally followed by a, a noun. Great. So we have two words left. The word appeal and the word important. So important is, for sure, an adjective. Okay, so the other possibility, or the only possibility we have here, is the word appeal, which can be a noun, of course. So radio's appeal was soon taken over by the television, which started a revolution of entertainment and advertising. After the television, the computer and the internet evolved as the most, of course, we need a, a long adjective after the most, in the superlative form, yes. So, as the most important means of communication, information, and entertainment. Well done. Great. Let's move on now. So, we are going to take two sentences from this paragraph in order to study them together. Are you ready? Okay, let's do that. So, let's discuss the following sentences together. The first one is <coughs> the telegraph in the late 19th century paved the way for not only radio, but the telephone as well. The second sentence is, the radio is a technology that started not only a means of communication, but entertainment as well. Great. What do you notice here? Wh what is common between these two uh, sentences? Uh -huh. If you look at these two sentences, yes, we have not only of course, but, and, as well. Well done. The same thing almost happens with the, with the next sentence. So we have not only, but, and, as well. Okay? What are these two uh, expressions? Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what, do we use, what do we use them for? Yes, we use them, or not only, of course, as you can see here, all, uh, the, uh, in both sentences we start with not only. Yes, so not only is a cohesive device used to alert the reader or listener, so it depends if we are dealing with a written text or a spoken text, of course, to alert the reader, I said, or the listener, that a second item or example is coming next. Not only this thing, but there is something which is coming next, yes. And usually it is, or this second item which is coming next is introduced by the words but also or but uh, as well. Okay, have a look at these two sentences. He is clever, he is hard working. Mm -hmm. It would be better to to combine these two sentences together, yes, in order to be more expressive, of course, in order to be more coherent in our uh, speech. So, can you do that? Can you combine these two sentences together? Of course, using the expressions not only, but also, or the new, not only, but, as well. Okay, can you do that? Mm-hmm, well done. So, he is not only clever, but he is also hard working. Or, he is not only clever, but he is hard working as well. Well done. Great. So, notice here the place of not only. In these two sentences, not only comes after he and is, after the subject and the verb. Great. So, not only comes after the subject and the verb. In this case, we maintain the normal order of the subject, which comes the first, and the verb, which comes the second, for sure. But, if not only is used at the beginning of the sentence, before the subject and the verb, there must be some changes. I said at the beginning, not after he is, not only starts the sentence, or we start the sentence by not only. So there must be some uh, changes, of course. Do you know these changes? Mm -hmm. Try to complete the sentence. If not only 
is used at the beginning of the sentence, then the subject and auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Yes, they must be inverted. We speak about a change in the order of the subject and the, the auxiliary. Pay attention. I did not say the verb. I said the auxiliary. Okay? Great. So, let's combine the following two sentences together. <coughs> Here's the first one. He's intelligent. And the second is, he is polite. So, I'm going to start the sentence with not only. So, as you can see here, at the, at the very beginning, we have he is. So, the change is, we have is he intelligent. So, we, we obtain the sentence, not only is he intelligent, but he is also polite. Okay? So, why is this? Simply because is here, okay, is derived from to be, of course. And we all know that to be can be a verb, and at the same time, it is considered as a, an auxiliary, of course. So, simply because we are speaking about auxiliaries here. We are not speaking about verbs. Pay attention to this. Great. Now, what about the following sentences? He put his pen in the electricity socket, and the second, he screamed at me when I tried to stop him. So, we are going to start the sentence or to combine, first of all, to combine these two sentences together. And we are, we are expected to start with not only at the beginning of the sentence. Let's remember, when we use not only at the beginning of the sentence, there must be an inversion of the subject and the auxiliary. Let's look for the subject. Where is the subject? The subject is he. Great. Where is the auxiliary? There is no auxiliary, of course. We have the verb to put. So, in this case, we use the auxiliary to do with all verbs. And the only exception, of course, if we have a verb containing an auxiliary or if we speak about the verb to be. Simply because, as we said, that to be can be considered as a verb or it can also be considered as an auxiliary. So, what do we need here? We need the auxiliary to do. Okay, let's do it. So, not only did he put his pen in the electricity socket, but he also screamed at me when I tried to stop him. So, what do you notice here? We, we, we used did. Why did? Why not does? Why not do? Mm -hmm. Simply because the verb put here is in the simple past tense. Great. So, and when we, we use the auxiliary to do, of course, the auxiliary to do must be put in the tense of this verb, of course. Great. Let's practice again. <coughs> she speaks French. She also speaks English. So, how can we de uh, combine these two sentences? Not only is there any auxiliary here, of course not. So what do we need? We need the auxiliary to do. In which tense? In the simple present because, as you can see here, speaks is in the simple present. So we have not only, this is another sentence, of course, that we'll uh, deal with uh, later. So we have not only does she speak French. So as you can see here, the S in speaks disappeared. Where did it go? So it goes to does. Great. So not only does she speak French, but English as well. The second sentence. He went to Australia and Canada. What is the subject? He, the verb, went. The verb went, of course, is to go in the simple past. Well done. So what do we need? Not only did. Great. Not, not only did he go to Australia, but also to Canada, of course. Great. Well done. Now, let's remember the previous or the first pictures we saw uh, together. Mm -hmm. So, we are speaking about 
Nikola Tesla, Alexander Graham Bell, Alexander Fleming, Gordon Good, Philo Taylor, uh, Farnsworth, and William Koff. What is common between all of these? So we said that all of them, or each one of them, invented something. Great. Great. So this means that they are inventors. Yes, the noun that we derived earlier from the verb to invent. So all of these are inventors. Mm -hmm. And all these inventors now are, are dead. Suppose they, they were alive. What would you say to them? Of course, bearing in mind their achievements, bearing in mind that they have done something wonderful to the humanity. Mm -hmm. So normally you are going to express your gratitude to them. Yes, well, normally you are going to say thank you for, for them, of course. Mm -hmm. Now they are alive. How can we express that uh, gratitude? Yes, we can do that by giving them prizes. Thank you very much. So we can give them prizes. So do you know the meaning of a prize? Uh -huh. Let's do it together through this uh, paragraph, of course. So let's combine or let's complete the following definition for prize. Of course, as you can see here, in this uh, paragraph we have blanks and we are going to fill in these blanks with the right tense and form, of course, of the bracketed words. So a prize is an award, blank from the verb to give, to a person or a group of people. So here we have an award and an award is a noun and the noun is described by an uh, adjective, of course. So the adjective from give. So the award does not do the action, but rather receives the action. So a prize is an award uh, given. We need the past participle, of course, to a person. So it is given, or an award given to a person or a group of people to recognize and reward actions or the verb achieve. So actions is a noun, of course, in the plural, and we have or, normally, we need another noun, of course. So actions or uh, achievements, great. Official prizes often involve monetary rewards as well as the fame that comes with them. Some prizes are also associated with exaggerated awarding ceremonies, such as the, the Oscars. Prizes, the verb to give, for a number of reasons. So what do we need here? We need a verb. In which tense? Yes, it is a descriptive sentence, so we need a verb in the simple present. Great. But in which form here? Yes, in the passive form, because prizes do not give, but prizes are, yes, are given. So prizes are given for a number of reasons to highlight, as, as an example of course, to highlight noteworthy or exemplary behavior and to provide incentives in competitions. In general, prizes are regarded. Prizes are regarded in a positive light and their winners are admired, of course. Do you know some, some examples of prizes in the world? Yeah, the famous one is the Nobel Prize, of course. Mm -hmm. Do you know any others? Okay, have a look at these examples. So, I'm going to provide you with paragraphs, short paragraphs, and each paragraph deals with one prize. And here are the names of the prizes, of course. So we are going to deal with six paragraphs, and we have six names of prizes. So the first one is the Nobel Prize in Medicine, the FIFA World Player of the Year, the African Airline of the Year Award, the World Food Prize, and the Ansari X Prize. Finally, the Neustadt Prize for Children's Literature. So, let's do this matching together. The first one, we are going to speak about certain prize, which is an association football award. Okay, we are speaking about football. So normally, it is going to be the world, yes, the FIFA World Player of the Year. So, the first one is done. Let's move to the second. We speak about the African Aviation Journal intro introduced. So there is an important word here, which is aviation. Yes, so normally we are going to speak about uh, 
the African Airline of the Year Award. So the African Aviation Journal introduced the African Airline of the Year Award in 1999 to give international recognition to individuals. And this is one of the most important reasons uh, for uh, giving prizes, of course, which is to, to recognize individuals or groups of people who have done something exceptional, of course. What about the third? So we are speaking about a certain prize which is intended to enhance the quality of children's literature. Of course, so we are going to speak uh, about uh, the Neustadt Prize for children's uh, literature, of course. <coughs> Great, let's move on to the next series. So we have done with these three ones and we have three prizes left. Here's the two paragraphs. The X Prize Foundation. Of course, we are speaking about uh, the, yes, the Ansari X Prize, of course. So, the X Prize Foundation sought to bring about the Ansari X Prize as a radical breakthrough in the advancement of human space flight, the aim being to open up the space frontier, of course. Let's move on. The next prize is an international award recognizing the achievements of individuals who have improved the quality, quantity, or availability of what? Of food in the world. So, automatically, we are going to speak about uh, the World Food Prize, of course. So, here is the World Food Prize. And the last prize, of course, is going to be, for sure, we have only one left, which is the the Nobel Prize in Medicine, of course, which is awarded once a year by the Swedish Karolinska Institute. It is one of the five Nobel Prizes established by the will of Alfred Nobel in 1895, awarded for outstanding contributions in medicine since 1901. Great. So, I'm going to refer you back to the first activity almost in this lesson, of course, if you remember, and here is the, uh, the activity, of course. The, as uh, we are speaking about the people or the six people, yeah, or the six inventors who have done something uh, wonderful, of course. So, among them, uh, I'm, I'm speaking about William Koff, Alexander Graham Bell, Gordon Good, Philo Taylor, Farnsworth, Nicholas Tesla, and Alexander Fleming. Who is the only one who received the Nobel Prize in, in medicine, of course. So we are speaking about Nobel Prize in medicine. So it cannot be uh, the one who invented the modern radio, of course. So we are, we are speaking about someone who discovered the, the penicillin, yes. So we are speaking about uh, this man. We are speaking about uh, Alexander Fleming, of course. Do you know him? Mm-hmm. Let's have a look at this paragraph in order to get more information about uh, Alexander Fleming, of course. So, in this paragraph, you are going to be asked to fill in the blanks with the right form or tense or form and tense of the verbs, of course, to get more information about uh, Alexander uh, Fleming. Can we, can we do that together? Alexander Fleming is famous for discovering the useful of penicillin as an antibacterial agent. So what do we have here? So we have the, and after the normally we need a, a noun, of course. The noun from useful is rather usefulness. Great. Raised in rural Scotland, he moved to London in his teens and worked as a sh shipping clerk. He earned his medical degree in 1906 from St. Mary's Medical School, where he, the verb, spent his career. So normally we have he as a subject, so we need a verb. And the verb must be put in a certain tense, of course. And the tense here, we're speaking about uh, the early 1900s, so where he spent, of course, the simple past tense. A researcher in the area of antibacterial substances, he discovered a natural protein with Bacteria kill properties. What is this? 
All this is a noun or phrase. Great. Composed of the noun, which is properties, and the, the thing which describes the noun is an adjective. Great. So, and as you can see here, there is a hyphen. So these two words are linked together. So what do we need? So we need a compound adjective. Great. So we speak about properties mm -hmm, that kill bacteria. Great. So in this case, what do we know? What do we need? I'm sorry. So we need the the present participle, the ing form, yes, to speak about something or a noun which does the action, of course. So here, the properties of this protein, of course, kill bacteria. So we need a bacteria killing properties that he named lysosome. In his lab in 1928, Fleming discovered the bacteria resisting substance. Uh, so as you can see here, it is almost the, the same thing. A bacteria killing properties or bacteria killing properties or bacteria res resisting substance, the same form almost. In his lab in 1928, Fleming discovered a bacteria resisting substance that he later identified as Penicillium notatum and published his findings in 1929, naming the substance penicillin. Fleming's chemistry skills were too inadequate exploit his findings. What does this sentence mean? The sentence means that the skills or the chemistry skills of Fleming, of Alexander Fleming, are not adequate. Yes, are too inadequate. This means that later he could not exploit his findings. So this idea can be expressed using the expressions two, two. Great. So here we can find to exploit. So we repeat, Fleming's chemistry skills were too inadequate to exploit his findings. But years later, penicillin, a verb to develop, by Howard Florey and Ernest Chain. Uh-huh, we have the, the preposition by, and penicillin is the subject. So, and we have the time indicator years later, so it is the simple past. The simple past plus by, which gives us the, the passive form, of course, so we will obtain a penicillin was developed by Howard Florian and Ernest Chain into the first significant, significant antibiotic. Fleming was knighted in 1944, and in 1945, he, the same thing, the Nobel Prize. He, the verb award, and to award means to, to give an award. So here we are speaking about Fleming. Fleming did not give, but rather he received, or he, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in medicine, of course. As far as uh, the Nobel Prize is concerned, do you have any idea about it? Mm-hmm. You know, Alfred Nobel. Great. Uh-huh. What about the, the prize itself? I'm not speaking about the person. Okay, let's discuss this together. So, have a look at this paragraph in order to, to know more about uh, the, the, the Nobel uh, Prize, of course, or Nobel Prizes, as we can see. Uh, later, of course. We are going to deal with this paragraph in a reading comprehension activity.